Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to Computer Hobbyist. Today we're going to be talking about selectable text boxes. Mono Game does not have the uh, text boxes built in, so you have to build your own. The good thing is, if you build your own, you, uh, they will be portable and be usable on both Macs, uh, Linux, and on Windows machines. So let, let's take a look at the text boxes I created. I'll, I'll, I'll explain how they work, and then we'll look at the code so you can create your own. So let's start that up. All right, the first one up here, this one is a numeric-only text box, and the one below takes characters and numbers. Notice neither one has a flashing cursor. That's because neither one is selected. So I'll click on the top one here. Well, actually, before I do that, let me explain what's going on here. You have a background image for each text box, and then you have a cursor, and then uh, you'll have the text too. So right now it's just displaying the background image, so we'll click on that one, and now we have a flashing cursor, and we can add uh, numbers to it. I think this one has a length set of about uh, 10, so... Yeah, it's got a length of 10. And the one down here, this one takes characters and numbers and also can handle uh, caps lock key or it can handle shift key. So let's do shift A, small s, and then let's do caps lock, D, F, and G. And then let's add some numbers, three, four, five, six. So that's basically how it works. So let me show you the code. Don't be intimidated by the code. I think it's a little over 400 lines or something. It's not that bad. I mean, at work, I, I sometimes I write a thousand lines of code in a day so or, or more. So it's not that bad. But here, let me show you the assets first. The first one we have is a flashing cursor. It's just this little thing here, and we make that flash on the screen. And then we have a sprite font, and here's the text, bo text box rectangle. That's what everything will be writing on. And we're using layer depth in this because I found the hard way it's best to use layer depth in mono game applications as opposed to just continually uh, doing sprite batch dot begin and sprite batch dot end. This whole application has one sprite batch dot begin and one sprite batch dot end. The only thing being written without a layer depth is the background, that's it. But everything else is using layer depth so it writes on top of that. So let, let's start with the helper classes I have. The first one is a one shot keyboard. I did a whole video on this, so watch the video to see how it works, but it gives you the keyboard state when you request it. It tells you if a key is pressed, and it tells you if a key has not been pressed. What this is important for is sometimes you only want a key to register once, so whenever you press a key, you're holding it down for a while, even though it feels like you just uh, picked it up. You're holding it down for a while, and sometimes it bounces too. So if you press like the A key, and you do it has not been pressed, uh, and it bounces or or whatever if it stays down for another period of time when it goes to check again it will check the has not been pressed and they'll be full so it'll only register one key press uh if you don't want to do that and you want uh, all the key presses to register then you'd use is pressed and then we have the one shot mouse button here which is basically the same thing except it's using mouse keys it gets the mouse state it checks if something's pressed or if it has not been pressed so let's go to the textbox.cs all right, this is just using system and usual mono game stuff like the uh, framework, graphics, and input. All right, let's go over the properties. You have current text. That's the text that is currently printed in the text box. And here it is, is that text position. Here's the cursor position. Here's animation time. We'll get into that in a minute. Visible. Uh, you can set these text boxes to be visible or invisible. When they're instantiated, they're, uh, I have them set as visible, but you, you can set visible to false if you wish. Here's layer depth. I explained the importance of that. Here's position. That's important. Selected. That tells you whether the text box is selected or not. And here's the cell width and cell height of the background. And here's a cursor width and cursor height. And then we got the length, which is the maximum number of characters the text box can hold. And here's a Boolean, numeric only. Uh, basically just says if the text box only accepts numbers or if it accepts numbers and characters. And then here's your textures. You got the regular texture here, which is for the background. And here's the cursor texture. These ones here are private fields. 
and then you got your cursor dimensions and a font and here's your constructor so you send it the texture for the background the cursor texture the dimensions the cursor dimensions the position the length whether it's numeric only or not whether it's visible and then the sprite font and then the text here what this is is sometimes you want a text box to start with text so you might want this text box to say something like uh, enter a number here dot 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 well when you instantiate that you would put that in this text and then you got the layer depth here so it's basically just setting all the properties to these things. The only ones I'll point out is the cursor position, takes the position and offsets it a little bit in the x-axis and a little bit in the y-axis. And the same goes for the current text position. Those are offset a little bit too. Uh, that's just to make them display in the correct part of the text box background so they're not uh, hanging off the side or anything. Or, or so they're not on top of the cur or cursor or the cursor's not right in the middle of the letter or something. You, you get the idea. All right, here's the animation time. This is that update. Update is called 60 times a second on these text boxes. And all it does is it makes animation time equal to animation time plus one. The reason for that is so when you're doing the is flash flashing cursor visible, what's going on here is it takes animation time modulus 60. And if it's between zero and 30, the cursor will be visible if it's not then it will be false so for, the cursor will stay visible for half second with this and then it will be invisible for half second that's how you get the flashing and here's the main unit of work for this class uh, add more text so you got a vector 2 which keeps track of your spacing uh, you get your keyboard state here and uh, lower this character starts, starts out as true. What that means is if lower this character is true, then if you're uh, displaying a number, it will display it as the, the small version, not the capital version, or lower version, not capital. And here, if you click the caps lock, or if you click left shift or right shift, uh, lower this character equals false, which means it will be capital. So that's how you handle the caps lock and the shifts. All right, so if this is a numeric only text box, you only want it to allow values uh, zero through nine, the numbers on either the keyboard or on the number pad, that's it. So here you're saying if it's not a backspace or delete character, you're just checking if the current text that length is less than the maximum length, in which case you'll lower the character. So if it's a capital letter, it'll make it a lower character. Or if this happens to be a number and you do lower on it, it just stays the same. All right, so current text equals current text plus text, of course. So you're adding the character you just added to the current text. And now you're getting spacing. When you add a character, you're never going to know in advance what they're going to add. They might add a lower character or they might add a, upper, uh, a capital character or they might add a number. So you never know how wide this character is going to be. So this actually measures the character that you sent to see how wide it is and it uses that to determine how much to move the cursor position after typing in the letter. All right, so now if it's a backspace or delete character, you're just checking to see if the current text at length is greater than zero, otherwise you don't need to do a backspace. And then you're doing the spacing again, so this time you're measuring the current text last character. That will tell you how far you need to move the cursor then. So current text equals current text dot remove last character, of course. And then cursor position equals the cursor position dot x minus the spacing dot x. And of course, the cursor position dot y would stay the same. And here's your render. This is called 60 times a second too. If visible, like I said, in this example, I just have the all the text boxes visible. But when it's drawing it, it draws the background image and it'll draw the string which is the current text, uh, put that on the screen. It uses layer depth to make sure that it puts it on top of the background image. And now you will draw the flashing cursor only if this text, the text box is selected and that's it. It says there only once a second. It's actually once half a second. My mistake. All right, so if it's selected in the cursor is visible it's just doing a sprite batch dot draw to draw the cursor all 
All right, so we've gone through that. So let's go to the game1.cs to see how this is implemented. So up here you have a bunch of private fields. It's got a graphics device manager, which requires no explanation. Sprite batch, no explanation needed. And here's your first text box, your numeric text box, and a vector2, which holds the numeric text box's position. And it an all character text box and its position here all character text box position that one's a vector 2 2 and here's your sprite font your maximum length which we will initialize in a minute and then your mouse state one shot mouse state and keyboard state one shot keyboard state and then time before next delete the reason for that is the deletes were not using the one shot keyboards has not been pressed uh, because we want deletes to be where you can, when you press a delete, and if you just lift up on it, it only does it once. But if you hold it down, then it will do several deletes. So it adds a delay there. I think the delay is like one sixth a second. So if you have the key down for one sixth a second or less, then it will do one backspace. But if it's more than one sixty of a, of a second, it will do more than one backspace. All right, here's our initialize here. So we're just uh, initializing the positions for the different text boxes, and we're making the maximum length of the character length of the text box is equal to 10, and time before next delete equals 10. Here's your load content. Um, main thing we're doing here, uh, other than creating the sprite batch, or, or initializing the sprite ba batch in the sprite font, is we're initializing the text boxes, or instantiating them. So here we're creating a text box, and your are uh, Set, sending it the text box rectangle that's the background uh, image and the flash flashing cursor that's the other texture and here's its position i think that's our correction that's d dimensions there of the background and that's the cursor directions and that's giving the position and the maximum length and this true here just says it is numeric and the last true there was uh, visible. So visible is true. And there's your font. And then the starting text, we're just sending it string.empty. And here's your layer depth. And the same goes with the all character text box. The only difference in that one is it has a false, which means it is not numeric only. You can have numbers or characters. Here's your update. You're just getting the state for the keyboard and the one sh actually one shot keyboard and one shot mouse button and as uh in most mono game applications if you hit the back button on the on a game pad which or if you hit the escape key the uh, program ends and then you got handle input here we'll get to that in a second and there's your numeric text box uh, dot update that happens every 60th of a second and so is it for the all character text box update so let's jump to the handle input all right here you got a key array which is equal to one shot keyboard state got dot get pressed keys so whatever keys are currently pressed it grabs them all all right, so now it's checking if a left mouse button is clicked, and if if it is, and the left mouse button, and if the, the, the left mouse button has not been pressed, then it does handle left mouse button click. All right, so here, what we're doing in handle left mouse button click is we're looking at the position of the cursor, and if the position of the cursor is inside either of the text boxes, it will set that text box to true and it will set the other one to false. So it's basically uh, collision detection. All right, let's go back up here. So we got to there. And here's your back into, uh, your back key and your delete key. It will set time before next delete equal to 10 if you pressed either of those. All right, sometimes you may get one more key sent to you. So actually this all runs only if a key was pressed. But if the key array has more than one key, then it's got to extract a single character or number. What might happen there is a key array, the first element will have a shift and the second will have the number two. So in this case, we'll just send the number two back. So uh, let's go down to extract single character or number. Yeah, so it's just saying here, uh, it, it loops through it, and if 
it comes across a character or a number it returns that and ignores the shifts and all that type of stuff all right so if you click the back backspace key or the delete key and time to four next delete equals zero then you'll set it to 10 and if time before next delete equals 10 you'll call the add more text and send it the uh, this is what I'm sending for backspace as a slash B that just signifies a backspace space or a delete was sent and the same for the character text box and then it sets time before next delete uh, equals time before next delete minus one so each time this is called it, it will make the time before next delete uh, one less so if you hold it down a while it, it'll do the pressing the backspace key will delete multiple characters but only if you hold it down for more than one sixth of a second all right so if it's a numeric text box selected it it checks here to make sure that a n number w was pressed or that uh, a, a, a number on the number pad was pressed I think if I go recall correctly numbers come back as like d123 all the way through 9 and uh, numpads come as num numpad 0 through 9 so that's how they come back so here uh, you take the key 0 and you re uh, strip off the last character so if you have like d6 it just sends the 6 and puts that in the value and here you're checking if it has not been pressed and then you're adding it to it all right here it's checking it to make sure it's an all character text box uh, that is currently selected and that the key pressed was either a number or a letter or a right shift key or a left shift key and if it's a right or left shift um, only then it just basically returns and if th this key has not been pressed that checks if it's a number pad key and if it is it strips off just the number and you'll do all character text box dot add more text and you, you add that uh, value otherwise you just add more text uh, with that character all right, we got anything else here? No, that's pretty much it. So let's just test it one more time. I, I... All right, so I, I don't think I showed you the backspace key. There's a backspace key that works. Yep. And let's hit the caps lock. Oops, it'd be nice if I actually clicked it. There we go. Yep, so that's working. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you can implement, uh, th th like I said, this is just basic text boxes. So whatever you implement, you might have to change around a little bit. But I hope it leaves, gives you a head start on everything. Have a good evening.